Embassy of the United States of America in Vienna and the American Chamber of Commerce in Austria organized this special event celebrating the Earth Day on April 23, 2009 in Vienna, Austria. Topic of this event is the clean fuel and vehicle policies in the US, the EU and China. The lecturer is Mr. Dennis Leaf, a senior policy advisor for international programs in the US Environmental Protection Agency's Office of Transportation and Air Quality in Washington, D.C. After a week touring through Austria, meeting decision makers from governmental agencies and members of the car industry, Mr. Leaf gives a talk to the general public at the America House in Vienna. He is welcomed by Bob Jugens, the Councillor for Public Affairs at the U.S. Embassy in Vienna. I'm very happy to be here. I thank the American Chamber of Commerce and the generous support of our embassy here in Vienna. We all have traffic congestion. Uh, vehicle populations are high already in Europe and the United States. They're growing in China and throughout Southeast Asia. If you look at the United States, uh, you have 800 vehicles per 1,000 population, which is very high. It's the highest in the world. And if you look at a place like Germany uh, and Japan, you have about 600 currently. We are concerned about these fleets because they contribute to conventional air pollution, which we would say is things like uh, ground-level ozone and fine particles. We share with Europe and Japan and the rest of the world, actually, a desire to decrease the emissions from these vehicles. Europe has taken the lead in this area, and we will soon be accelerating our efforts in the United States to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. The electrics and the hybrids will, will fill a niche part of the market, but we still have to deal. We can't turn away from these diesel and petroleum-fueled vehicles. There's growing interest on diesel vehicles because of the combustion process will get about 20 to 30 percent more fuel efficiency than a comparable gasoline vehicle. If you look at the European market, about 50 percent of the passenger vehicles are diesel. But our diesel sales are, are relatively low. So their challenge in the United States is to overcome the memories uh, in people's mind of the past when, when diesels were low performing and, and seen as dirty cars. You look up here and you see taxes of about 14% on, on a gallon of fuel. If you, look, if you were to look in um, Germany or Japan or many other countries, the tax component of, of the fuel that uh, you buy or your parents buy would be about 70%. We see China and the United States relatively low, uh, about 60 cents. The EU, up around 130 U.S. cents, we see Germany even higher. In, in a lot of countries, the diesel price is kept lower than the gasoline price. And in Europe, I think that the governments wanted to encourage the use of diesel in the automobiles as a, because you increase the fuel efficiency, you can reduce the CO2 emissions, and you can decrease your oil imports. In order to have a very clean car, you need to reduce the sulfur content of the fuel. Sulfur is an element. It's a, it's a natural uh, component of oil when it comes up out of the ground. You have to do a lot of chemical processing in your re refineries to remove that sulfur in order to put it in your uh, cars. And then on diesel vehicles, one of the most effective means that we have to reduce emissions of fine particles, which are very, very small and get lodged in our lungs is using uh, diesel particulate filters. We found out ways to control these emissions. And so I will stand here today and say uh, diesel can be part of the solution. It can be part of the solution for clean air. It can be part of the solution for climate change. Because we have found that with the low sulfur fuels, with very efficient advanced catalysts, and with diesel particulate filters, we can, we can now have a diesel vehicle that is just as clean as a gasoline vehicle. We have an obligation as an environmental protection agency to protect the health and the environment of the American people. And we looked at a total cost of about $11 billion to retool, to put on advanced catalysts, to install diesel particulate filters on trucks and things. The, the benefits 
It's basically a 17 to 1 benefit to cost ratio. You look at the health benefits, so um, tens of thousands of premature deaths are avoided over time. Chronic bronchitis, hospital emissions, lost work days. The benefits far outweigh the costs. Uh, feeling dunk. Uh, what about alternative uh, fuels? Do you see any future for that? We're trying to get uh, our law, the Energy Independence and Security Act of 2007, requires that the United States use 36 billion gallons of uh, renewable fuels by the year 2022. And uh, to put that in context, it's about, probably about 15% of our fuel supply. Is there any possibility that the United States could offer uh, incentives uh, to China to reduce uh, uh, gas, uh, greenhouse gas uh, emissions? It's a sensitive issue in the United States, uh, you know, about giving them, you know, incentives. You know, there's a lot of politicians in the United States, a lot of people in the United States say, why, you know, we're shipping our jobs to China, uh, we have a huge uh, trade deficit, why do we have to give them incentives? But I think there will be some opportunity, and, and there were preliminary discussions between the two governments now and on just the kind of programs that you were talking about. What will be your opinion on uh, building up trains, uh, railways, instead of highways? <laughs> you have a, a system where, you know, historically, you know, car companies would buy up tram uh, companies and shut them down. And so you have a society built around personal mobility. I think President Obama is clearly recognizes, and the Congress clearly recognizes need for better public transportation. As part of the economic stimulus package, for example, uh, there was almost $10 billion provided for the study of high-speed rail. Um, and so the president is a very strong supporter, and, and I see great potential for it. I want to thank Dennis Lee very much and thank all of you for coming tonight. Thank you.